10,000. Not enough. 20,000. Not enough. Minecraft is a kid's game, some people say. But there's no kid that can handle slabbing all day. This is a job for a master slabber. Yes, this is a job for the Etho Slabber. Hello and welcome back everybody to Hermitcraft. So, I have been doing something a bit crazy here. I have been slabbing over everything in the nether. I think about 150 by 250 area has been covered with the slabs. Ethos Slabber has been busy. And that is to prevent mobs from spawning outside of our nether farms where we don't want them to. They can't spawn on slabs, so if we place them, they're going to spawn exactly where we, we want them to, like our wither skeleton farm up ahead there. So let's check it out here. What's the grand total? Well, we're up to 72,800 smooth stone slabs placed. And also, we placed 5,600 nether brick slabs. Where did those go? They went on top of the fortress. Aha. <laughs> so if we want to preserve the look of our nether fortress, we can use uh, nether brick slabs. And it looks like exactly the same when you're finished. Yep, so we got the area prepared here. And we are ready to get started making some nether farms now. And I thought we would start with a wither skeleton farm. First off, I'm actually pretty excited about this. I've never made a wither skeleton farm. And in 1.16, there have been some changes to make it a little easier to build them. And also, they're a little bit better now as well. You'll notice that wither skeletons are the only mob that can spawn on the wither roses. Uh, the idea behind it is like fire resistant mobs can spawn on fire blocks. Like zombie pigment can spawn on magma blocks. While wither resistant mobs like the wither skeleton can spawn on wither roses. Aha! Uh -huh. So you can see we placed another grass layer above the wither roses, and without any wither roses, blazes, magma cubes, skeletons, zombie pigment, everything is spawning up there, so the wither roses will stop them and will only get the wither skeletons. Now something else very important is we can actually spawn wither skeletons anywhere within the fortress as long as we spawn them on nether brick. But if we want to spawn them on the Wither Roses, we're going to need dirt or netherrack below those. And the only way that will work is if we build our platforms, our spawning platforms, within the bounding boxes of the fortress pieces. And the biggest fortress piece is these intersections. They have a 19 by 19 area and we can get up to three layers uh, for the Wither Skeletons to spawn on. <laughs> I gotta be careful here. Ah! Run! Oh, I got the stutter step. Okay, we're fine. So our first Wither Rose pad is going to be level with the intersection. And then you can see we have a three airspace and then the next grass pad above that. And now we're going to go down three airspaces and then another grass pad below. And that will be the maximum area we can handle. Whoa, 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 whoa. No! We ran out of Wither Roses pretty quick there, so we gotta buy some more. Oop. One diamond per stack. Yes, yes. Here comes Impulse. We actually need, uh, like, 32 stacks more. <laughs> so, he's delivering more to uh, Color Complete here for me to buy. My hero. Oh, baby. Okay, okay, okay. Two. I give you tip. Give him a full stack. For the delivery, you know, that that's super nice. And he's giving me the shulkers. is a great deal. Whoa! Oh, my respawn anchor didn't work. Uh-huh. So, in hindsight, I should have set up the beacon sooner. Now we got resistance and regen. Should be much safer here. We got the three layers installed with the Wither Roses, and just for now, I slabbed over the other two intersections, but we'll probably be building three more layers at each of these. We're just gonna test it with one for right now, though. 
The other big change in 1.16 that makes Wither Skeleton farm so much easier is Wither Skeletons will try to attack Piglins. So we're going to put a Piglin in the center of each of these pads. So our Piglin is going to go right on top here. And now we got to figure out how we're going to get the Wither Skeletons to fall down as they try to attack them. I think we're going to do this shape here. And trap doors, they see these as full blocks, so they try to walk on them. But they will fall down when they do that. So once we get the piglin in place, he's going to be at these two blocks here. And I think we're going to hold them in place with trap doors all around. I think we'll do like a 3x3 three three area. The wither skeletons will ram into that and then fall down here on the four sides. I think we about got everything set up now. We just got to get the piglins in place, which is actually really tricky. <laughs> there we go. Oh, one, one final hit for the road, huh? This layer is about cleared, so I'm just going to break the glass block and drop him down. He seems okay. We're going to do that one more time to get him to the bottom. Then we'll replace those glass blocks. And get the next guy. Oh yeah, we got to remember to name him too. Okay. Alright everybody, well we got it pretty close to ready now. At least one of these sections. And uh, working pretty good. So we'll just see the rate it takes for them to come back here after we kill them. And here they come. At a pretty decent rate, you know, it's not quite maxed out. I think I might be too close to the bottom layer. And they might not be spawning on the bottom layer. I think I'm 22 blocks away from it and you need to be 24 for mobs to spawn. But overall, it's, it's going okay. I had to make a few changes with this thing though, had some issues. So the way we had it originally, they were getting clogged, like up to 10 guys were getting stuck on the, like trying to go down here. So I did the wall trick. If you have two walls on the sides, it increases the width a little bit and then two guys can fit down in the space. And then you can see where they drop here, they land on a hay bale. Actually, instead of replacing the glass blocks with hay bales, we're just going to get rid of them because they're actually not needed. Another thing you'll notice is I put redstone on top of them. That's to stop any mobs from spawning on them. And yeah, hay bales reduce fall damage by 80%. So the idea is when they fall from the top layer there, hopefully they'll be roughly around the same health as the guys that spawn lower down. And then when they take the final plunge, they'll all be around the same health down there. We can get them down to a one hit kill. But yeah, it's still in its early stages here, but we are getting a crazy amount of drops. Like, actually insane. <laughs> Bones and coal, super useful stuff too. And we'll be getting uh, wither skeleton heads for the beacons, which will be great. It's an XP farm, um, all kinds of goodies. So one thing we're going to do to improve it, obviously, is we want to add some hoppers underneath this to pick up the drops. And then send those into a sorting system. And another cool thing we can do with that farm is tame wolves. And then the wolves count as player kills. Which means we'll actually get the wither skeleton heads automatically from those guys. Because these guys fight the wither skeletons. And they do two hearts of damage. As long as they can one hit kill the wither skeletons with two hearts damage. Then uh, we should be fine. Otherwise if a wolf takes more than one hit to kill them. The wither skeletons can fight back and they'll kill our wolves. So that's why we want them all around the same health level with the hay bales there. Uh, we got to go around here, though, and try to find some more wolves. Oh, we found one. Yes. Yes, yes. All right, here we go. Get a second one. Start bringing them together. Oh, and there's one over here, too. Awesome. All right, you two. And baby wolf. So I'd say let's actually take a break from the nether stuff. We've been in there for quite a while and there's a lot of other things I want to get to today. And starting with the block exchange. So last episode we put up our sheep head. We were selling it for a diamond block and we actually sold it. Yes. It is ultra rare, you know. It's understandable. Let's put five more in there. And we're going to offer a new one here. Toast. The other thing I saw is Zuma has changed his bounties again. So he wants uh, some... Some different things here for six diamonds for one. That's actually a crazy good price. These are like the last ones he needs, I believe. Chiseled nether bricks. Yes, I did get those. Chiseled nether bricks. Yeah. And he wanted uh, polished blackstone bricks. Got those. 
Six diamonds each. Like, that's a great price. And clay. We got the clay. Excellent. Um, Azuma, he wants andesite. He's selling andesite. <laughs> I don't know. Um... What do we do? You know what we're gonna do, guys? We're just gonna we're gonna do this for him, just so he sees it. <laughs> All right, everybody. So we have hopped over to our base now. We got something absolutely amazing here. There's been a delivery from Corallis. Remember last episode we did the "What Is Love" song for him, and he says down payment for "What Is Love." Love it. He was uh, absolutely. Like, beaming with joy with it. <laughs> and check this out. Oh, he paid so much. And he's saying he's, like, gonna pay more. But this is, like, amazing already. Five shulker boxes full of gunpowder. Another shulker box of mending books. This is full. Remember, we got another one the other day. So that's two of these now that he's paid. And this is not it. He's actually doubled this amount. But the other half went to our business partner, Vintage Beef. Knock, knock. Come in, Ethel. Oh, come on. <laughs> You always say that before I've done knocking. <laughs> I have to knock knock. Come in, Ethel, come in. You, you accept my knock knock? I, I accept your knock knock. Come on in. Whoa. Very safe in here today. Very safe. Did Indiana Stop. Jones traps boulder behind me or something? Not yet, not yet. No, I still haven't yet. fixed the leak, by the way. It's kind of, kind of annoying. You still don't have a cup to catch the water either. Yeah, I know. I should, I should definitely do <laughs> free refills. Sea water up above me. Uh -huh. So, um, you you have. Oh, wait, wait, wait. You didn't tell me to take a seat. Oh, take a seat. Take okay. a seat. Okay. Right there. Beautiful. Yeah. That was presumptuous you, you, of me to to sit absolutely. on your comfy minecart here. Very polite. Cold Canadian steel. You are. <laughs> My cosmetical issues further down the line. Um, yeah. You you wanted to speak to me. Oh, yeah, I called this meeting, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, you did. <laughs> Holy smokes, I got to think about what to say now. Um, <laughs> with the music store, right, you uh, yes. you commissioned me to install What is Love for the Corellis. Yes. And it is finally done. On time. Oh, nice. No delays. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you something? Did he, did he try to, to haggle you for the price? We did discuss the price. You know, I thought that was your job, but for some reason he came to me and I... Huh. I figured, he might be avoiding I me out for... A good price. He might be avoiding me for some reasons. Neighborly disputes that had, had no, in no way did it involve murder. You refused to give him sugar, didn't you, when he came by? Listen, he could buy his own sugar. I've seen his diamond. Oh, pile. that's <laughs> not very neighborly of you. Well, I mean, it is what it is, okay? Okay. That guy okay. gets on my last name. I don't want to get between your drama. Good. So where's the diamonds? You got them? Diamonds? Well, didn't he pay you? Yeah, yeah. We got lots of payment. Good payment. Okay, so first off, check this out. This is all yours, by the way. I, I kept mine at my base. Everything you, you see in... is for you. <laughs> you paid in Look at all these books? mending books. It's like full shocker. And then he got this. Mending book. And oh. this. Oh. And this. Oh. And this. What? And this? Whoa. How big was this song? Five. Uh, it's four minutes. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. It's, it's huge. Oh my gosh. Okay, that I will never need gunpowder again. Now, I have my own TNT farm, or gunpowder farm, I should say. So this is kind of useless to me. But at least okay. I don't have to stand there anymore. I thought you might say that. So how about this? I buy your gunpowder for diamonds. No, you're gonna okay, okay. That way, you so, get... how much? How much was he supposed to pay you in diamonds? Um, you were supposed to work that out, and you never did. So I just went. I was like, "Hey, yeah, he never Relis, I want gunpowder." So he gave me gunpowder. He gun bypassed. Powder. He bypassed the boss and went to the employees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. interesting. I got better okay. customer relations than you. So. All right, what's your offer for the gunpowder? Forty diamonds for the five shulkers. Forty for the five shulkers. Let me look at these. This keep is good it, quality. Gun keep in mind, right Jevin here. is selling them for five stacks for a diamond. I keep the mending books, though, right? Yeah, you got to keep the mending. Done. Forty diamonds. Cough them up. All right, here you go. Here's your forty. Oh, very nice. Right on the desk, too. Very nicely done. Okay, awesome. That. Ooh. Oh, it's the leak. <laughs> the leak got you now. <laughs> it's a very pretty dangerous leak. Um. Okay, that's good. 
that's good. I appreciate that. Was was there anything else? Um, it's, 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 it's... yes, <laughs> yes. There was one more thing. <laughs> what do you, What do you mean? There... <sighs> Snitches get stitches. Spit Cor- it out. Corellis may have signed you up for, at Shady E's for free glass oh, oh, oh. gardening and pest relocation. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. All, all three of them. That favor coming in handy. Okay. That's uh that's good to know. That is good to know. Huh. Stop messing with my chair. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um hmm. Interesting. He's not on now, is he? No, he's not. Okay. No, okay. No. Okay. Etho, Etho. I know I know snitches get stitches, but in my case, snitches get ancient debris. <gasps> that's for you, buddy. <gasps> just just one. Just one. More really? more where that came from. If you keep giving me inside information. Oh, I got to snitch more. This is great. Yes. Snitches get cinnabon. Riches. Snitches get yes. riches. Snitches get riches. Yeah. Oh, oh, hashtag snitches get riches. We That's change genius. the world okay. with that. Absolutely. Snitches get riches. Beautiful, Ethel. Uh, I thank you very, very much. And and to show that I'm serious, just kidding. I'm not- <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no, I'm not. I'm not. No, because you snitched, so you get riched. <laughs> so you don't. You don't get any any terrible stuff. Actually, I haven't even. Yeah, no. I think I'm all out. I think I'm all <laughs> out of traps. Okay. 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 <laughs> uh huh. So I think that deal worked out pretty good for us. I'm happy with it. And check this out. We already converted over Beef's share of the gunpowder to TNT. Ha ha ha. <laughs> so I've been all out of TNT for a while now, and I've I've like desperately wanted it. So. We still got all our gunpowder here too, um, so I'm happy about that. We can go netherite mining or chop down trees again, all kinds of stuff that you need TNT for. So that's cool. Now there's been another delivery at the base here as well. Let's go check this out. I think Azuma forgot a shelter box. I'll go return that to him. But uh, yeah, he left us some mini blocks, and Azuma is also holding a tournament for his standoff game. And yeah, our opponent for the first round of the tournament is going to be false. Ho, ho, ho. I'm going to have to practice a little bit, I think. I, I did a little quick game with Cub Fan the other day, and he beat me like so bad. But yeah, let's go check out the gaming district here for a second, actually. This is that big project we've been working on with Tango. And this is also where Azuma's standoff game is. It's right over here. Can we get in? Oh yeah, look at this. So it's like an armor stand game. you got to like knock the armor stands around. And take out your opponent. I'm gonna have to figure out how they far they move when you hit them with the sword and stuff. <laughs> uh, but we'll get into the rules of that when we actually play the game. And he's got this cool downstairs area. It's pretty nice. Some instructions here. Uh huh. Uh huh. But uh, yeah, check it out. If you haven't seen it yet, so we got a lot done here with Tango the other day. Uh, we added black borders around each of the layers here. We we made some big pillars to hold up these uh, bigger sections. Um, also, all the walls finally got the stone replaced, and we uh, got this uh, nether wart and crimson wood. I guess it's crimson stem, isn't it? Uh, background with some vines. There's also hidden lighting all over the place here, and we got the basalt uh, pillars every every once in a while. And all in all, it's like getting pretty close to done now, actually. It's still up top, I think. Oh, there he is. Okay. Got him. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> oh, I just stuck in the middle there. <laughs> just invisible. Oh man, that really yanked them. Oh, the wings. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, he flew. And uh, the other day, uh, Joe also helped out a lot with this too. Remember, we had a bunch of trees around the island, and Joe offered to cut them down for us. Yeah, I think I can take care of that. I've been clearing quite a few trees over by Cleo's base. You know, I have quite the curriculum vitae when it comes to these sorts of affairs. Do you want uh, you want the Canadian lumberjack tutorial on how to cut down trees? You know. I thought I knew how to cut down trees, but I've never had the opportunity. Oh, you gotta to learn, learn from, from a, a Canadian. Canadian lumberjack. Come with me, Joe. I'll show you. Okay. So your nature, Joe. You would mm-hmm. think, you know, you clean out, clean out the spot, get get rid of all the vines. You know, they're in the way. Mm-hmm. And then you do a clear cut. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then you push it over. 
But that doesn't work. Oh. You gotta go to the top that. of the it's... tree, and then you dig your way down, like like so. Oh yeah, yeah. But you gotta watch out for bears. The bears will chase you mm -hmm. up the trees, and they can climb. Yeah, that, that is not a trouble I need. Uh, what you're doing there is a safety hazard. When the leaves start despawning, you gotta be on the tree. Just a heads up. Ooh, gotcha. But uh, yeah, we're back at the base here again. You might have been thinking, oh, Etho's not working on the base today at all. That disappointment. <laughs> You're kind of right. But uh, I did do one project, a, a gizmo. We got a new, pretty important gizmo added to the base. And you're actually looking at it right now. It's just very subtle. So we got a new chest here. Concrete farms. Oh, that's right. We actually have a concrete maker now. So check this out. We got the, we got the gravel and sand here, right? And our dyes. So the idea is we can easily make the dust here, the powder. The sea pow, as I like to call it. We go to our barrels. Oh, light blue dye. All right. Nice, nice. And then we go to our hidden crafting table here. And we make the light blue sea pow. And then, if we want, we can put it in here. Still kind of in the testing phase, by the way. So if this uh, doesn't work out, uh, don't get mad at me. <laughs> and then you can see there's a redstone torch down there. I hold right click. It'll dispense one sea pow every time we place it here. And then every once in a while, oh, there they go. A layer of uh, concrete gets made and it gets pushed down. And then after three push downs, three layers, it'll fire off a TNT. And gonna happen yet? Oh, I guess on the next one. I just went for the slow piston speed because I wasn't sure how it would work on a server. We sped it up anymore. Oh, and there's the TNT. It harvests it and just ignore that. <laughs> and then it should end up in the chest here. And we had some of the other colors like in the stack from before, so that's why we're getting orange. Uh-huh. Let's go take a look at it from the outside though, so you get a better idea of what's happening. We got another wonderful thing for Azuma to look at here. <laughs> <laughs> Big box of a uh, crying obsidian. So this is what it looks like inside the blast chamber. TNT falls from the dispenser there and lands on top of the crying obsidian here. And then blows up all the concrete around the wall. It falls down into the water and goes into some water streams. Which, uh... Can I get out of here? Oh, I got out. Amazing. Which then goes up a pipe over here. Ooh. Up a bubble stream, and then there's a dropper system to put it in the chest at the top there. It's actually a pretty simple concrete maker. Um, basically, it makes a 9x9 nine nine ring of the concrete and then pushes it down into the blast chamber there. Then every third time it does that, it uh, lets out a TNT. And we control that with a counter here when we have three items in, so it counts to three. And then it uh, lets out a TNT. And there's also a, a piece in there just to make this thing work. Kind of hard to show you guys what I got built here. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. And then, um, normally we stand in the room there, but we can also access it from over here. The water is to turn the concrete powder into the hardened concrete. And normally we stand above here and put it on the redstone torch. Uh, but the pressure plate is just there to block the hole so you can't see through. And the end rods to let light through. The sign is so that we can't stack the concrete two blocks up here. And, uh, yeah, you just hold right click here. It goes around. Pretty simple. And then when it gets to this smart piston over here, when this block gets there, it lets the signal through. And it'll push everything down. Like so. Does that three times and the TNT blows stuff up. Oh, and actually, we should do another project at the base here. I was just thinking, we're going to get so many bone blocks now, like just a ridiculous amount from that wither skeleton farm, that there's no point really to farming skeletons at our, our mob grinder here. Um, we're also getting zombies here and, and stuff, so why don't we switch this over to a purely creeper farm now? Uh-huh, so yeah, I think the idea is we just got to put some trap doors on the ceiling and then that'll make it so only creepers can spawn here because uh, skeletons and zombies are a little bit taller than creepers and they won't have enough space to, to spawn now. 
We'll just get creepers. All the gunpowder in the world. <laughs> um, you might be wondering why I don't just build like a big, super efficient uh, creeper farm somewhere and, you know, AFK for weeks and get all the gunpowder you want. Oh, man, I thought about it, you know, I'm thinking about it. Uh, I do really like gunpowder, but in general, I don't really talk about this much, but I don't actually like AFKing at farms too much in this game. It's something I try not to do because it's like weird to me for the game to play itself when you're not there <laughs> so i always like try to design stuff in a way where i have multiple things running in an area and then like i'm building my base and i'm getting gunpowder at the same time sort of thing um i do make exceptions every now and then with the afk thing but just in general it's not my play style oh yeah and by the way i never showed this in video but i also added two more layers below the one we were just at they're a little bit smaller, but uh, we're going to turn these over to creeper spawning pads as well. All right, very cool. So it looks like it's working here. I haven't seen any skeletons or zombies now. Um, it's not super fast or anything, but uh, you get a trickle of creepers every now and then while we're working on the base. And if we're the only one online, then it really starts to take off. <laughs> but uh, this is kind of the general rate. But uh, anyways, I guess it's about time we wrap up this episode. I did have a bunch of other stuff I wanted to do, but... Uh, that's gonna have to wait till the next one, I guess. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching, and until the next one, take care, have a good day. Bye-bye.